My name is Arzucan Ashkan, and I'm a marine conservation scientist, political ecologist, and the 2021 European Rolex Scholar of the Our World Underwater Scholarship Society. I have spent the last five months focusing on advanced dive training, science and conservation, skills development underwater, and ocean ambassadorship, supported by the Our World Underwater Scholarship Society and Rolex. In the first half of my scholarship year, I traveled to six countries, conducted over 150 dives in temperatures ranging from 0 to 34 degrees Celsius, participated in three research missions, and obtained nine qualifications. It was not easy to embark on this journey in the middle of a global pandemic. So let's rewind back to the beginning of my scholarship year. Based at the University of Oxford Seascape Ecology Lab, I finished writing up my master's thesis. Using 10 years of data from the Maldives Whale Shark Research Program, my research examined injuries in whale sharks from collision with vessels and combined these insights with the role tourism plays, not only for local livelihoods, but also as an alternative to shark fishing. However, I found that 60% of the sharks in my data set had injuries from propeller strikes and that encounters with them had declined by almost half due to a dramatic increase in tourism pressure. My first scholarship experience took me to another place that is facing increasing threat of human activity, the Arctic Circle. I joined Captain Andreas B. Heide and his team on board his 37-foot sailing vessel Barba for the circumnavigation of Svalbard. Our voyage formed a critical part of Captain Andreas B. Heide's 3,000 nautical mile Arctic Sense expedition, aiming to research, document and share the challenges faced by marine life in the polar Atlantic. We departed from the world's northernmost settlement and set sail into uncharted waters towards the North Pole until we could go no further due to the density of sea ice. Along the way, we explored the surface of floating sea ice, recording any unusual observations and dipping our hands into the cold to take opportunistic water samples for analysis. We also deployed towed hydrophone arrays, drones and tested a newly developed acoustic monitoring device. The core of our research focused on the sentinels and keystone species inhibiting these polar waters, blue whales. Now recovering, these animals were once extensively hunted in the region. Once we hit 80 degrees north, it was also time to prepare our dive gear that we had carefully stored on the vessel all this way. Captain Andreas B. Hyde and I undertook several exploratory dives under the ice. Aside from pushing my diving abilities to a new level in such an extreme environment, this expedition also helped me grow as a sailor and skipper. I learned how to safely sail a small vessel through sea ice in uncharted waters and log dozens of hours alone on the helm. After my time in the Arctic, I made my way to Egypt to get comfortable with my underwater camera setup and my new dive equipment. The amazing Sarah O'Gorman from Red Sea Diving Safari invited me to Marsa Shaka village to test all the new kit. Due to the pandemic, my photography mentor Saeed Rashid joined us on Zoom. After each mentoring session, he remotely reviewed the photos I took at the beautiful house reef. In each lesson, he challenged me to focus on one thing at a time. Split shots, the textures and shapes of different corals, the personalities of fish, and the feeding behavior of all the different marine species inhabiting the waters at our doorstep. The village was also regularly blessed with unexpected visitors, and I will never forget the morning I got to spend in the water surrounded by a pod of dolphins that decided to surprise us. Having gotten comfortable with my equipment, it was time for more theory and learning. I first completed my paddy nitrox with Ahmed Hassan, then got kitted up for my self-reliant diver certification with Ondine Trollin, and finally joined instructor Hossam Abdelaziz for my sideman course. This was the first step required to dive into the world of longer research dives in overhead environments, such as wrecks and caves. At the end of my time with Red Sea Diving Safari, my dive equipment started feeling like an extension of me. Having skilled up a bit more, I then joined Paddy Course Director Ahmed Mamdou on board the Deco Divers Liverboard for a week of diving in the waters boarding Sudan in the contested Halib Triangle. The area is home to some of the world's most biodiverse coral reefs and also witnessed the complex political tensions. 
It was the perfect place to combine insights from my previous degree in geopolitics with my research work as a marine conservation scientist. The intricate reefscapes also offered the perfect opportunity to test out my new strobes and to capture some of the most beautiful marine life inhabiting these contested waters. I then returned to the UK to jump straight back into cold water diving. My first stop was Cromwell Quarry, where I joined the legendary Neil Brock from Bristol Channel Diving Services. For decades, he has been in charge of dive safety for large natural history productions such as BBC Blue Planet, as well as industrial and scientific operations at sea around the world. Looking to conduct these kinds of projects in the future, I began my training as a commercial diver with him. The course covered the use of full face masks and underwater communication systems, dive supervisions in all conditions, as well as advanced decompression theory and legal aspects of diving. We also visited the DDRC decompression chambers to gain knowledge of hyperbaric medicine and emergency treatment for commercial divers. At the end of the course, I emerged from the water as a fully qualified HSE class 4 commercial diver. Afterwards, I decided to push myself further and take my first steps into the world of technical diving with Mark Powell from DiveTech UK. I learned how to set up and manage twin cylinders with manifolds, went through advanced decompression theory, gas management and air shutdown drills, and practiced how to respond correctly to potential problems and hazards when twin set diving at depth. I look forward to skilling up further through technical diving and using my ability to conduct longer and deeper dives for research on elusive shark species. Good science needs effective communication and storytelling through photography and film. And that's why my next stop was to visit Dave Blackham at Esprit Film and Television. Him and his team have been working to support the film and television industry for decades, working with renowned productions led by BBC and Nat Geo. During my placement as an underwater camera technician, I went through the Gates STO course, which provides knowledge on the setup, test and operation of their professional underwater imaging systems, as well as the use of red cinema cameras. I cannot wait to put my newly learned skills to use for science communication and underwater storytelling in the future. Wanting to push my technical dive skills further, I then met with Richard Walker from Reckon Cave UK to complete my GOE Fundamentals course. We started with decompression theory and gas mixtures before proceeding with land drills for emergency procedures and signals. GOE is renowned for its standardized equipment configuration using harnesses and backplates as a way to increase safety and streamlining of research and exploration dives. From perfecting propulsion techniques and buoyancy in preparation for dives in overhead environments, all the way to polishing up air sharing, it was an exciting and very demanding course, especially in British November weather. I'm very proud to have passed my GOE course and to put these new skills to use when setting up more ambitious marine science projects in the future. After my GOE course, I met up with Mark Powell and John Crawshaw, this time to gain the skills that would help me address the most deadly form of marine plastic. More than 100 million pounds of abandoned fishing gear pollute the oceans each year, entangling both marine life and wrecks. Large removal operations led by the dive teams from Ghost Diving UK require highly advanced and specialized training. And so, as part of the SDI Sea Shepherd Ghost Gear Recovery Diver course, I learned how to safely manage air consumption, team communication, cutting devices, lines, ropes, clips, surface markers and lift bags at the same time to retrieve industrial fishing gear off wrecks. I felt very happy to complete this course as these skills will now allow me to make a tremendous difference next time I encounter industrial fishing gear during my dives. Next, it was time to join the award-winning documentary production team at Shark Bay Films, made up of John Boyle, Fionn Crow, and River Owsley Brown. During my time with them, I got to dive deeper into video editing and colour grading of underwater footage. I also finally learned how to fly a cinema drone from River. And shortly after, I purchased my first drone to capture more aerial footage of research projects and marine life during my scholarship year. In December, I finally got to go in the field with the Maldives Whale Shark Research Program. On board the MV Felicity, we spent two weeks patrolling the South Area Atoll Marine Protected Area. Every day, we conducted surveys along the MPA, searching for whale sharks topside and by towing researchers behind our boat. To gain a bird's eye view of vessel activity and whale shark encounters, we also used my drone as a research tool. And sometimes, 
came across beautiful surprises such as reef mantis cruising at the surface. Whenever we did manage to spot a whale shark, we entered the water to obtain photo IDs of the individuals for long-term monitoring of behavior and presence in the MPA. Whale shark spot patterns are unique to each individual, just like our human fingerprint. To identify them, we use an algorithm originally developed by NASA scientists to map star constellations. For every encounter, we also recorded environmental variables such as wind speed, water visibility, and further information about the location and time of encounter. With tourism pressure in the MPA increasing rapidly, it was also vital for us to capture images of any injuries from collision with vessels. My time with the MWSOP was invaluable and it allowed me to continue building on my thesis research examining the impact of human activity on sharks and to propose solutions in preparation for publication. Seeking to dive deeper into complex human-shark relationships in the Maldives, I then headed to the island of Fomula, a place known for the peaceful coexistence between humans and one of the ocean's largest predators, tiger sharks. I had the opportunity to study the sharks with guidance from local shark expert Ahmed Ina. Based at Pelagic Divers, we spent two weeks heading out to observe and interact with these magnificent animals every day. After reading a paper about the loss of 70% of the world shark populations, sharing the waters with these evolutionary masterpieces with nothing but humbling. Close, intimate encounters made for an unforgettable and scientifically very inspiring experience. I noticed that despite being protected from targeted fishing, these giants still suffered from the impacts of human activity. Many individuals had large fishing hooks lodged into their skin and others carried the scars of injuries. I wrapped up my time at Pelagic Divers by supporting Dr. Samantha Jane Howler's efforts to conduct the first comprehensive survey of formulas reefs. We laid out transects to study the diversity and health of the corals in the pristine waters surrounding the island, and I left knowing I would certainly return back for further research. I'm hoping to return to Formula in the second half of my scholarship year to set up a shark research project and start collecting baseline data for a PhD proposal. My next experience took me to the world's deepest pool at Deep Dive Dubai to gain another skill that is absolutely vital for research and storytelling underwater, free diving. Over the course of two weeks, I got to learn breath holding and propulsion techniques from five times free diving world champion Natalia Jarkova. Initially, overcoming equalization problems following an ear infection was a big challenge. However, after consistent practice, I was able to descend into the dark depths of the pool and fully immerse myself in the freedom granted by mastering my breath hold. Then, GUE's very own Jesper Kjola invited me to support the development of a new paddy triox specialty, which saw us dive beyond 40 meters into the heart of the pool. In addition, wreck explorer and technical diver Aaron Argramson of Dirty Dozen Expeditions offered to me to take my first free breather dive. It's safe to say I immediately got hooked on diving silently without bubbles and I'm planning on becoming a CCR diver very shortly. Lastly, I completed my GOE gas blending course, becoming qualified to fill cylinders with gases ranging from nitrox to trimix and mixing my own. The independence this knowledge gives me will be vital for long expeditions abroad. From Dubai, I took a 30-hour flight to the Caribbean and landed in the Cayman Islands, where I set up my base at Ocean Frontiers Diving Center for two weeks. Award-winning underwater photographer and judge, Alex Mustard had invited me to join his Digital Madness photography workshop there. We spent two weeks optimally setting up our underwater cameras, learning the ins and outs of stroke positioning and subject selection for wide angle photography. Our days were structured to visit the most suitable dive sites for the subjects Alex encouraged us to focus on each day, such as certain species of corals. We also went through editing in Lightroom together before then showcasing our best photos each evening. With Rex, marking the start of my entry into the world of diving nine years ago, I most loved the dives we spent at the USS Kitty Wake Wreck. And it was during this trip that I truly discovered the extent of my passion for macro photography to capture the small wonders below the surface.
Photographing the stingrays of the Cayman Islands also proved to be the perfect opportunity to really work on lighting at different times of day. And of course, the site offered unforgettable interactions with these surprisingly friendly ocean pancakes. In the next half of my scholarship, I will be reaching for even more growth, scientific work and exploration. Next up, I'll be taking part in an underwater storytelling workshop held by Ocean Culture Life, learn more about coral restoration at the Perry Institute for Marine Science, work even closer with sharks with Christina Zanato, dive deeper into the world of underwater caves, and tag endangered manta rays. Beyond these experiences, even more awaits beneath the waves, and I cannot wait to take you on this journey with me.